And hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge back once again with another installment of my ongoing and deeply unpopular series Till the Fabled End, in which I overview the entirety of the DC Vertigo Fables universe, one collection at a time. Up until now I've been doing oversized hardcover collections, I've done the 15 Fables ones, I've done the 3 Jack of Fables, other bits and pieces, and now I'm looking at Fairest, which is a spin-off series from Mainline Fables, but unlike Jack of Fables, was never collected in oversized hardcover. As such, I'm doing it trade paperback by trade paperback, and today I've looked at the second trade paperback, which is called Hidden Kingdom, and contains issues 8 to 14. So if you remember last week, we looked at the first trade paperback, which was actually seven issues. It was a six issue story arc and then a one off standalone issue. This is actually the exact same structure. The first six issues, which are issues eight to 13, is a six issue story arc. And then issue 14 is a standalone. So what's the main substantive part like? What's the six issue story arc? Well, it's a six issue arc called Hidden Kingdom written by, um, I forget who the author is, but it's no one I'm familiar with, and it's not Bill Willingham. And it's entirely a six-issue arc about Rapunzel. Yes, it's Rapunzel within the larger Fables mythos, so you will see uh, Bigby Wolf, you, you will see Fro Tittenkinder, and a variety of other people as well. But ultimately, this is a Rapunzel story. So whereas the one we saw in the last trade paperback was a Briar Rose story, and to an extent a Snow Queen story, this is a Rapunzel story. And I think that's going to be the theme throughout these fairest trade paperbacks, that each one is going to focus on a different female lead protagonist from Fables. Rapunzel's kind of cool. Um, she wasn't a massive player within the main Fable story, and to be honest, I'd kind of forgotten all about her. But Having been reminded of her when I started reading this, I remembered she is quite cool. She has this whole thing going on where her hair grows infinitely and it grows really quickly. And as a result, she's not allowed to leave Fable Town because her hair grows something like a foot within four hours. So she can't even go to watch a movie in the cinema or something like that because it's just too noticeable to mundanes. Um, yeah, and this story is basically about her. It's set well before the Fable's story itself. So I think it's set, like, I don't know, a few years before the events of Fables issue one, um, roughly speaking, anyway. It's all about her. It's all about her resolving a, a sort of a dangling thread from her past, from her history. Um, generally speaking, I kind of view this in my mind as, like, this is a Far Eastern or Japanese-focused story. So it's got loads, to do, loads of stuff to do with, like, Shogun and Kitsunes and just kind of um, Japanese mythology and Japanese fables and stuff like that, which we have seen a bit in mainstream fables, but this really focuses a huge amount on that, which I wouldn't have necessarily expected, given that Rap Rapunzel is very much a Eurocentric, very Western fable. So the fact it all got kind of mixed up was a little bit unexpected. The story itself is okay. It's got a couple of cool dark twists and turns near the end, but ultimately speaking, um, it was just okay. I found it a little bit confusing and tricky to follow, and that's partly because it relied upon a knowledge of a lot of fables and a lot of Japanese history that I just wasn't familiar with, and I'm just not familiar with, being someone who's obviously born and raised in the West. So some of it was a bit over my head, some of it got a little bit confusing and hard to follow. Generally, it was a pretty decent story, um, although it hasn't really got any impacts or long-standing consequences. This six issue arc happened before the main fables arc, and if you never read this, it won't change a thing. The main fable story, um, the main Bill Willingham 150 odd issue sto story arc remains the same and unchanged by the revelations and twists and turns in this. That said, if you're a Rapunzel fan, definitely worth reading. I'm kind of a Rapunzel fan, I thought this was pretty good, but it's not as good as the last trade paperback. So that's the first six issue arc. Let's keep it short, let's keep it sweet. So the next and final thing is just Fairest issue 14, which is a standalone one-off issue. Oddly enough, I mean, technically it's about Princess Alda. If you don't know who she is, if you carry on reading Main Fables, you will find out. Um, but to be honest, it's more about Reynard the Fox than it is about Princess Alda. It's okay as a standalone one-off issue, but it feels very much kind of like a what-if vignette more than anything else. It doesn't really seem to have anything interesting going on in it. And despite an attempted epilogue at being a bit menacing and, oh, what's going to happen next? It's just a very average, middling, blink and you'll miss it issue. Nothing good, nothing bad. Won't forget it. Won't remember it in a couple of days. Anyway, um, 
yeah that's it this was fairest volume 2 the trade paperback hidden kingdom issues 8 to 14 pretty good but not great homework for next time is going to be trade paperback 3 All right, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading. You can get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.